Hi, my name is Naima Ramos Chapman, and I'm the Associate Editor at Campus Progress and Pushback.org. And I'm here with Eduardo Garcia, the Advocacy Manager at Campus Progress, and we're here to talk about immigration. So, Eddie, um, could you talk to me a little bit about some of the recent wins, mm -hmm. uh, maybe one that just sticks out to you that the immigrant rights community has worked hard on in the sure. last couple of years? So the biggest win that the immigrant rights advocacy community has achieved in the last year was actually announced this summer on June 15th. Um, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program basically is protection for undocumented youth that meet certain criteria. It, it offers them an opportunity to work legally in the United States, but I think more importantly it addresses um, some of the really tough practices that the current administration has passed in deporting undocumented people. So this program basically protects these folks from deportation practices that are being executed at the local level. Um, so it really offers these young people that meet these criteria an opportunity to have deferred action. Okay, so um, essentially like deferred action would help like young people who are trying to get an education and, mm -hmm. and serve and who actually came here from no fault of their own. Yeah, and it's okay. protection. Exactly, and to be clear, it's a two-year program. So every two years, those that are applying for this program that meet those eligibility requirements that get uh, qualified for this program would have to apply every two years. And that is, of course, unless we see actual policy passed that provides young people an opportunity to apply for citizenship or other legal status. Okay, and um, if I'm not wrong, uh, Obama, President Obama was actually the one who announced the directive. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. wondering, um, since we're talking about you know his shift in immigration policy, what what are the can how do how do the candidates stand on the issues? You know, like we're getting closer mm -hmm. to November, so I think that's an important important thing for people to know. Yeah, you're right. Um, the president has always been in favor of the Dream Act and of having conversations around how we can legalize more people. Um, so you know, the problem is that there are 12 million undocumented people living in the United States that don't have a status. They don't have any uh, meaningful legal rights uh, and so that has forced a lot of people especially under the last four years where, where we've seen such a rise in deportations it forces people under the shadows um, and it doesn't allow for employment opportunities it doesn't allow for um, benefits to basic rights um, so the president has stood in favor of the dream act which only addresses what you know undocumented youth um, but he's also uh, been favorable on comprehensive immigration reform. That being said, we've also seen an unprecedented number of deportations over the last four years under his watch, unfortunately. Um, so by no means is it perfect. And on the other side, because you talked a lot about what Obama has done, um, mm -hmm. Romney, what, is, what are his stances? That's a good question. Um, so for a long time, it was really unclear where Romney stood on immigration policies. Um, but throughout the primaries this year, he spoke very disrespectfully of the immigrant community, of the Latino community specifically. Um, and he even offered this concept of self-deportation. Basically um, references the Arizona law that passed in 2010. And that law aims to make life so inhospitable for immigrants that they would be willing to leave the country because it's so unbearable to live in the state. Um, so what does that mean? It means that police officers are targeting people, they're stopping people, you know, for the way that they look. It means that there are limited, um, there are limitations on public services that are available to them, like running water, for example. Um, so he's actually spoken favorably on Arizona's law as sort of being a model for the rest of the country. Um, another thing that he's talked about that gives us ideas of what his immigration plan would look like goes back to his comments about the Deferred Action Program that the President enacted earlier this year. As of late, he said that he would keep the program for those that have already benefited for it, but that he would cut it off to anybody else, so that he would basically start rolling back Deferred Action for undocumented young people that really benefit from this program. Unfortunately, he hasn't really talked about the, the, more, the more important thing about immigration, which is how do you legalize people that are in this country right. that We've are been here for years and, and in many cases feel like they are American you know like I know being in the field and talking to a lot of undocumented youth a lot of the times they don't even know that they mm -hmm. they're not here legally until they turn 18 or until they like want something or want a driver's license and their parents have to tell them like I'm sorry but 
you know. So it's, it's kind of a, a hard a hard thing to learn and then realize that you can't, you don't have the same rights as other people. Under a Romney administration, if the DREAM Act were to ever reach his desk, Romney has vowed that he would veto it, which means that there would be no opportunity for the hardworking young people that are trying to get their citizenship through higher education. There would be no way for them to ever become U.S. citizens. Going back to the DREAM Act really quickly, uh, why should other Americans care mm -hmm. about, you know, what, what does it do for us, for our economy? Like, if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the Center for American Progress actually just issued a report in which they analyzed the economic benefits of passing legislation like the DREAM Act. Um, so the report that they just recently released says that if Congress were to pass the DREAM Act, there would be a $329 billion stimulus for this country. Um, and that means jobs, that means an increase in revenue. Um, so clearly it's, it's an economic issue that doesn't just impact immigrants, and it impacts our economy. And so that's, that's definitely a reason why more people should be invested in this issue. Um, I mean, another reason too is immigrant communities don't live in isolation of other Americans. Um, Immigrants yeah, are our neighbors, are, our friends. Exactly. They, who we go to school with. Exactly. Um, and so I think it's important for people to realize that immigrants live in communities where they have family members that are citizens, where you know they offer to and sustain local communities and economies. And for these reasons, we have to care about what happens to, to immigrants. That being said, it also affects people because of the way that we've seen enforcement being practiced at the local level. You can't tell whether or not someone is undocumented based on what they look like. And so we're finding that a lot of people are being targeted based on the color of their skin, not by their legal status. Uh, so this is an issue that affects all Americans and that we definitely need to be having more discussions around. What else needs to be done as far as advancing the rights of the immigrant community? Like what's on the horizon, if you can talk a little bit to that. Yeah, well I think it's important to recognize that a lot of the activism that's been happening at the local level has been spurred by young people. So the policies that they're working on are really the ones that we should be focusing on. And so a number of states, a number of um, activists in various states have been really pushing on tuition equity, which means passing laws in states that make higher education more accessible for young people that are trying to pay for college, that are trying to get an education. Currently, financial aid is not available for undocumented students. Currently, they have to pay out-of-state rates, even if they've been living in the state for their entire life or you know a number of years, they don't qualify for those benefits. And I don't know about you, but college, when I was in school, I, there were, every year there were raises in a tuition. You know, it's becoming less and less accessible for most working people. And um, undocumented youth are no exception. And, and in fact, unfortunately, in most states, they're forced to pay out-of-state rates which create additional barriers for them to achieving their education. Yeah, and their dreams in a lot of ways. You know. Exactly. But I think that we need to be able to get to a point where we can have another conversation as a country about how we can address not just the dream youth, but how we can address the undocumented population living in this country. They're a part of our, they're a part of our community, and so we need to find out how we can work together to, to address this issue so that, you know, Families that are living in mixed status communities are not being deported and that they have access to the things that, that help them achieve the American dream. Thanks. So to learn more, please check out campusprogress.org and pushback.org to see how you can get involved.